all human being takes birth with some potential abilities. Similarly, all football players also take birth with some inherent qualities. Whatever we have, on the basis of this, we can achieve certain thing which is known as acquired. And this acquired level of performance can be utilized for the betterment of their performance in actual game. The expert says that football has got four pillars that is strength, stamina, speed and skill. Other expert says of course five, strength, stamina, speed, skill and spirit. Whatever it may be, the skill is one of the most important elements in football. The skill is different from the technique. The technique is a model. A skill is the application of this model during the course of play. Now, what is required to survive in the highest level? The performance of players should be at that level to fulfill the demand of the situation. For effective improvement, we need to analyze the skills in order to know the problems one is facing in executing a technique. When you analyze a technique, we execute a technique in three parts. One, introduction part, which is known as approach. Main part, that is the execution. And the third part is known as the follow through or cushioning. Now, in case of skill, in addition to these three components, we have to go for two or more, that is the reading the situation properly and on the basis of the reading, one has to take a decision. All these components will have to be addressed for better and effective improvement of a player as far as technique is concerned. All these elements will be covered in this topic as far as possible. We discuss the stages of technique training. Although in reality it is very difficult to bifurcate these techniques in three or any other parts. But for discussion sake and to understand the process of technique training, we divide the technique into three parts. One, the acquisition phase, consolidation phase or stabilization phase. Third is automization phase. Now in this, first we go for learning phase, then is stabilization or refining phase. Next is automization phase. That means we are moving from crude to fine form. In acquisition phase, that is the introduction of a technique, that is a new technique. It begins with the introduction of a technique and continues till a player is acquiring a rough form. And this practice is carried out under easier condition or ideal ticket condition so that the players can execute the technique without any problem or without any disturbances. This phase, as I said earlier, serves the development of rough coordination. The movement must be mastered completely in standing position and under facilitated, facilitated condition. Later on, these exercises are practiced while moving. Some adequate or relevant preparatory movements must be practiced before executing the technique so that the players are not facing any difficulties at the time of execution. As I said earlier, the practice should be done in easier or identical condition and that must correspond with the age and level of the players. Here for ensuring the improvement or development, the practice or the same technique must be practiced repeatedly. There should be maximum repetition without repeating the mistakes. That does not of course mean that repetition should be on the same day or in the same training period. It may be after two or three days or maybe after one week. 
the whatever they have learned it must be practiced after some time now in this the correction of faults plays a very vital role because in most of the cases the movement concept is not clear the player will not be able to execute the technique correctly so there will be a lot of mistakes lot of problem it is the responsibility of the coach to identify those mistakes those faults and then rectify the remedial steps should be taken as early as possible otherwise the players will be repeating the wrong thing and it will become their habit or later on it will create lot of problem and the players will face stagnation at a very early stage the balls and exercises are proved to be very effective in this stage now since the players are not having well coordination effort must be made to develop this coordination that reflects in the quality of the technique the objective of this phase is creating an idea of a movement that is achieving a standard form now the movements executed under simplified condition in stationary and then moving activity performed in isolation where conditions remain almost constant and is done in absence of opponent here the question of introducing opponent is not there so it should be free from any opposition rather the condition should be identical in order to make the activity either or gradually difficult we may follow the following steps that is varying the standard form increasing the speed of movement increasing or decreasing the space changing the direction of movement now the characteristics of this phase is that the movement concept is not clear since this phase comprises of first familiarization of a new technique the execution is not perfect the movement is quite rough incomplete as well as full of errors movement lack correct rhythm there is no consistency an inadequate or rough movement characteristics characterizes the movement coupling in this stage we do not or we should not emphasize on movement coupling that means combining more than one element in one technique the application of force is not economical movement is unprecise if you look into this pictures you will come to know the how the movements are been conducted and these are all a picture of unprecise or inadequate movement and that constitutes a wrong execution of the movement this might be due to the unfavorable physical condition lack of coordinative abilities wrong or improper perception that leads to inadequate movement sometimes it may so happen there is an interference of a technique or similar movement learned earlier now care should be taken so that these problems are not faced by the players the other reason might be there is a fear of injuries due to the nature of the movement there may be a fear in the mind of the players that they may sustain injury then lack of conscious effort since they don't understand its relevance with the actual match or actual performance they may not be trying it consciously so what is required at that point of time is to have motivation the player the coaches should motivate the players every now and then so that they don't lose interest since they are not in a position to perceive the thing properly or analyze the thing properly so they are, are likely to commit mistakes in order to overcome this there should be some methodical means so for first and foremost thing is to organize organization of these exercises should be as simple as possible so that it doesn't pose any difficulties to understand on the part of the players the exercise should correspond level of the players age or their abilities 
The movement of the player should be easy to understand. No complicated things should be included at this stage. It should be very easy for the players to understand and to carry out. There should be variety in the training because technique training is boring. But here, again, I would like to put a word of caution that variety for variety's sake is useless. Variety should be introduced only for the sake of avoiding boredom. The organization that the environment nearby should be conducive for coaching or for training. Ensure that the player's attention are not being distracted. Even at the time of organizing the class, it should be such that the players learn more things than that means their attention should be towards the practice and towards the technique for the development. There should be no destruction or no disturbances. Coach should try to avoid all those things as far as possible. Analyze and assess the present state of the players and existing preconditions of learning technique. There should be a planning well in advance on the part of the coach so that he doesn't waste some time or any time in organizing the class. He must know where he is going to organize, how many players are to be involved and what will be the next course of action. Ensure that the equipment required for this practice are workable. Wherever necessary, coach must provide necessary safety measures. It is the primary duty of all of us to ensure that the players are practicing in a safe environment. Develop optimal readiness. Develop a rough motor imagination through practice. Inculcate the basic principles of correct technique right from the beginning so that relearning is not required. Relearning is a difficult task, so as far as possible, we must avoid that the players are facing a stage which cause relearning and puts difficulties. Now while explaining whether the technique fundamentals of the technique or the organization of the class, the language used by the coach should be simple and easily understandable on the part of the players. That means the communication should be as simple as possible. Now once the practice starts, the task of the coach is to identify the faults and take remedial steps. Rectify the mistakes either directly or it may be done indirectly. Now directly means by manipulating maybe the approach run, maybe the contact, maybe the other thing what is directly related. Indirect thing Say for example a kicking, it goes wrong because everybody knows the contact was wrong. Now why the contact was wrong? It may so happen that approach run is longer. This is for example, reduce the approach run, you will find that the other problems are overcome, the execution of the technique is correct. That means this is the indirect way of manipulating the technique for better execution. Encourage the players every now and then and recognize their effort because the players are practicing, they are not getting any motivation. So whenever they are doing certain right thing or they are trying, it must be recognized and they must be encouraged. And as a coach, we must distinguish between the crude mistakes and the marginal mistakes. So if it is marginal mistakes, instead of interfering every now and then, it may be overlooked. Or sometimes if the coach is convinced, if marginal mistake can be rectified, then the, there will be a positive effect on the other mistakes, then he must do that. The important aspect is maintaining a record because this is a guideline for both the coach as well as the player. Once we maintain a record, that will help the coach either to compare his performance with the norms available or in case of norms are not available, 
then he can compare his performance with the previous day one or previous performance and that at the same time will help the player to know what is his status what are the mistakes he is committing whether the development is there if it is there whether the rate of improvement is satisfactory or not if not then remedial step or necessary steps may be initiated sometimes it may so happen the fault is with the curriculum that means the fault with the coach itself then if a record is there the coach can change or modify his curriculum to make the training more effective because for us the most important person is the player and their improvement because we are dealing with human being not we are dealing with robots moreover if we have a record we can give feedback to our players in this type of uh, what we call the training activity is important but it is equally important to have rest so activity and rest should go hand in hand because rest is as important as the activity is of course that rest does not mean that complete rest it should be active rest now while executing a technique we must give a clear picture to the players that is given by a demonstration preferably the demonstration should be given by the coach if the coach is unable to demonstrate it for certain reason he may take the help of a player who can execute the correct model of the technique if it is also not available we can take the help of a picture or a video clippings but the important aspect is whenever we are demonstrating we must not combine the explanation particularly in case of beginners because then they cannot either see the demonstration or they cannot listen the explanation so it should be done only for the elite people not for the beginners most important points of the fundamental principles may be stressed at the time of demonstration as well as explanation now once the players are in a position to execute a technique when the condition is identical or condition is simple and they can perform it executed almost at a satisfactory level and it is the time for the coach to move to the next stage that is the stage of consolidation or stabilization this phase starts when rough coordination has been achieved and last till the achievement of fine coordination now here all possible combinations must be practiced the simple form depending upon its importance for the game should be selected each time and practice in the form of complex exercises now here not only simple exercise it is to be made complex gradually the degree of difficulties must be increased gradually depending upon the nature of the technique further perfection of the technical movements are done under consideration of accuracy speed and to conceal the intention of the player in this phase varying the conditions is most important after and with high physical load here all the movements whatever we are doing it must be done with high physical load now consolidating the technique under more difficult conditions may be done by increasing the speed or rhythm of movement reducing the time or space of execution now fixing the sequence of movements and the last one is to introduce a passive opponent the characteristics of this phase 2 that is the consolidation phase is the movement rhythm is similar to the rhythm of technical model that is the application of form is economical and effective movement coupling is correct movement amplitude is optimum movement flow is good and without tension the player can execute the movement almost consistently the performance can be mastered under advantageous and normal condition why this improvement is 
the reason may be attributed to the ability to intake and to process the information that means the perception or perceptibility of the person of the player has been increased this might be reflecting in the quality of the technique the motor sensation appears to be very precise the central nervous system improves or the function of central nervous system improves now the methodology followed in this are the complex exercises earlier it was simple now the complex exercises may be introduced in this the pace of execution is increased gradually the targets may vary now here you will find a small model or example here the players are getting two balls of two different colors one they are following the other one they are moving after passing they are moving to a new place so these are the complex one the many times the players what have been they are not in a position to execute it the more they are getting practice they can perform the activity or this exercise very easily the supply of the ball may be from different angle and or different directions the changing the opponent the players may be exposed under varied condition now the same opponent should not be introduced we may change the opponent that means the quality of opponents the player will be facing different type of opponents which needs to adjust or cope or to overcome different challenges sufficient opportunities are offered to the players for solving problems independently here the coach must not interfere every now and then the players will be committing mistake and the coach should guide them that's all no much interference in between sufficient time must be allowed to the players to stabilize the technique give time to the players they automatically they will be able to stabilize keep a record and evaluate the performance continuously organize the exercises so that progress become obvious and feeling of success starts appearing draw the attention of the learners to eliminate the major faults this should be guided to the players now concentrate on one fault at a time there might be two or three faults mistakes now as a coach he must attend one that to the major one once you are eradicating the major fault other faults are automatically overcome arrange the exercise so that the quality of performance is always possible supervise exercises and give continuous feedback to the learners use appropriate and supplementary exercises continue the training with varying stress to develop the technique more exactly appropriate steps should be taken to improve the input of meaningful practice now in this we must follow certain principles or guidelines in this phase the fine coordination is stressed the perfection of technical movements is done under accuracy speed and effectiveness in the game exercises are executed under simulated conditions followed by passive influence of opponent here the passive influence means the opponent will give you an impression that where you stand but allow you to continue the movement one should practice the technical elements varying the standard form technical training with large number of repetition should be performed at high speed and after high physical load movement should be practiced within a training cycle for maintaining the achieved techniques stagnation and some deterioration may cause frustration hence the coach must constantly motivate the players the perception through kinesthetic vestibular and tactile must be stressed get amount of correction must be done practice must be carried out under varied and changed condition special attention should be focused on correct individual technical behavior the application of suitable fainting is a prevailing task 
The task should be done under more or less standard conditions to increase the degree of stability of movement execution. Techniques should be practiced under tactical consideration. And idiomotor training can be very effective in this stage. When the players are in a position to perform or carry out this technique in a satisfactory level, even though some disturbances are there, some changes are there in the environment or passive opponents are there. It is the time for the coach to move to the next higher stage that is the optimization stage. In this, the conditions are varied and unknown. Techniques are stabilized in presence of active opponent. The practice is done under game-like situation and competitive stress. The physical load may go well beyond the competitive stress. Players may be exposed in actual game under easier condition or under more difficult conditions. This exposure will help the players to improve correct application of tactical actions as the situation demands. When we talk of the characteristics, the player can achieve the aim even under difficult and changed situation. The movements are characterized by high degree of consistency. Movement rhythm is correct and highly stable. The movements become automatic and self-regulatory. In this stage, the main task of the coach is increase the psychological requirements in comparison with second stage by exercising under match-like condition, organizing certain training competition. Exercising with high volume of load, making use of other possibilities offered by improved performance factors, that is fitness to perfect the techniques learned. Here we must understand technique alone is not practiced in one cycle. Side by side we also try to develop the physical qualities. Once the physical qualities are developed, that technique need to be adjusted so that the technique is executed in the correct form and it matched with the developed physical or other qualities. Exercising under disturbed condition is another means of developing the technique. So the coach must inculcate in the training schedule itself where the players are facing some disturbed situation. Stabilize the course of movement under more difficult condition. Educate the players for self-observation and compare their respective performance with the model. So we are gradually making the players independent so that they can understand what they are doing, what are the mistakes they are committing, what are the steps they should initiate so that the mistakes are not repeated. That means initiative comes from their side. They understand the thing, they realize it and they try to rectify their mistakes. Remedial measures may require ascertaining root of the fault. This is very important. At lower level, you know, there is no problem in improving the performance. The, the more they are practicing, they will improve. But in finer stage, when the technique is refined, it is not possible for the coach or anybody to find out the root. He might be knowing the cause. In order to know the root, we may have to have the investigative eyes or we may have to take the help of cinematography and the help of the experts who can analyze each frame individually so that we can find out the root, actual root, why the problem has evolved. And on the basis of this information, we may rectify the mistake and in final stage, the players will improve. Although this reflection of improved performance is very limited, but it is very effective. Motivate for further development of the technique. Now here you can find this is a picture of three stages. 
how they are reaching close to the perfect model of the technique. As such, nobody reaches or nobody is perfect in the world. Everybody is trying to reach near perfect. So this is a glimpse of how the technique are been refined from the acquisition phase to the automation phase. This is a continuous process. Now whatever we have discussed here we are just summing up the degree of difficulties of an exercise can be manipulated by following means that is the speed of the player, speed of the ball and the opponent. Initially there may be a player or no opponent he is just standing giving an impression or instead of player we may use the marker then the passive opponent and then the active opponent. Now degree of difficulties may be changed by following that is the number of players from few to high, size of the field, big to small and shape of the field as we have seen earlier. Now the difference between the phases of technique training is qualitative. Practically it is not possible as such to divide the techniques into different phases. But for discussion sake only we have divided it into three phases. In fact it is a continuous process and it is a never ending process. It should continue and with the improvement of the physical, mental and other abilities it needs a readjustment and it is a continuous. That's the reason why even the players of the World Cup they used to spend 45 minutes minimum every day in order to refining their technical abilities at top form. Thank you very much.